Why hello there, I'm Nal, and uh, today I'll be showing you how I got this beautiful controller for around $90. A working one, as a matter of fact, and that's how I was able to get this for so cheap. You don't buy these working, you buy them for parts. Now I'm not saying just go out and buy a index controller like right out of the bat. Like, oh, it's, it's for parts, I'm just going to buy it. Um, what you got to look for is thumbstick drift. Uh, this one has the little drift thingy where I bought it quote unquote drifting, you know. It was uh, being sold by a large distributor which had really good reviews on eBay and that's who I bought it from so I guess the person had a lot. Well I guess I kinda got a little lucky and this thing didn't come with any drift and um, I'll post up right here. I Actually it was listed for $80, I offered 70 which was pretty fair came with free shipping and the seller accepted uh, after taxes it's around seventy five dollars and um, yeah but you know I obviously knew that it, it's not gonna come with uh, you know working joysticks so I bought uh, five of these replacement joystick parts uh, here's the uh, listing right here on AliExpress for these joystick parts uh, when buying from AliExpress I recommend buying from the seller who has the most uh, like most items sold on that item so the listing I bought from had the most sold and had a lot of reviews and all those the reviews are very positive where I'm going with this is that we're gonna replace the joystick fix this and hopefully get this for a reasonable price you know using a index controller for a reasonable price now I repaired this up with my HTC Vive and everything works completely fine so it has a lot of sensors and you want to keep that in mind because when we take this apart there will be a lot of ribbon cables. So yeah, there, I'm going to link down below this Imgur gallery of index dis disassembly really. And we won't be disassembling this like too far. This is only just, uh, just enough where we can take out the board inside and desolder and remove the old joystick and then put in our new joysticks right here and solder them back and hopefully we get a working uh, index controller. Uh, there are actually two types of joysticks. Uh, there's one with a plastic gimbal and one with a metal gimbal. I have obviously, obviously bought the metal one. The index controller using the plastic uh, joysticks. Uh, yeah, joystick parts. Uh, they have plastic and I don't think that really plays into the actual joystick drift, but it is a nice kind of peace of mind and also you cannot upgrading it while you're at it. Something with metal so it's a little bit more durable. But what actually creates the joystick drift itself is the uh, potentiometers inside. The potentiometers create a voltage difference uh, on these, uh, uh, in what position they're turned in. So to create that voltage difference, there is a carbon film and there's a wiper that moves across that carbon film. So this middle pin would presumably be the wiper and then the two other side pins will be the um, two ends of the carbon film. And basically it acts as a variable resistor and um, obviously that will eventually wear out. And when it starts wearing out, it will actually start sending kind of like the wrong... Uh, voltage, you know, the wrong input. So even though it would be straight, uh, the controller would be reading a certain voltage that says, oh, okay, I actually would be turned, you know, forward or something like that. So it's a common thing that happens on all controllers that will happen. And it's kind of inevitable after so many actuations and forces. Now, I think these should be treated as consumables because they will wear out. And that's why I will be replacing this working one because it just will break. So, yeah, so there's that. And I think we'll start off with the disassembly. Oh, and it should just pop off just like that. And if you did it correctly you wouldn't have broken a clip and I haven't 
I have already broken a clip before, and that's not nice. So inside, as you can see, there are there is a ribbon cable attaching it. To undo the ribbon cable, what we're going to do is get our tweezers and grab the ribbon cable, and uh, it's not coming up, so I'm just going to use my fingers because it's easy. But there it is. There's the trackpad. Cat Rules is actually really good at documenting the disassembly and uh, I have to thank him for having this guide. So what we're going to be doing now is uh, undoing some screws. So that is a TR6 bit. So you need to get a TR6, Torx, star shape bit, and uh, we're going to undo, uh, yeah, you probably can't see this, but we're going to undo this screw, uh, this screw right here, and uh, the screw's holding down this the mechanism for the band and the one right here so it's a little tricky A nice little trick I like to use is just rubbing alcohol to soften up the glue. I just got this little like pen here that I was gonna use the stem to kind of like get underneath and hopefully that should be enough to soften the glue up. Uh, hopefully not enough where it actually pulls off the rubber because I don't want that. I, I want to get the PCB. Well, Oh yeah, look at that. So definitely a little bit of rubbing alcohol really makes it a lot easier. Oh, I don't even need it anymore. Just look at that. Can you see there's little shiny stuff. So that rubbing alcohol really did soak in. And that is a big plus. Definitely use it. It'll make this assembly a lot easier. And there's that infamous screw that's just there. Okay, I see. And there will be a big ribbon cable. I have no idea how I'm going to reconnect when I disconnect it. So there's a ribbon cable underneath here. You can probably see it. It's right there. I have no idea how I'm going to reconnect it. Oh, you don't want it. It swings out pretty far. Just like that. And there is a able for the sensors. So we're gonna pull off the <sighs> Yeah, so do not pull off the thumb stick. Be very careful because I almost just ripped the ribbon cable. Like I said, there's a touch on the thumb stick. Oh my gosh. So to remove said thumb stick, we will have to remove more ribbon cables. So as you can see, the thumbstick is no ordinary thumbstick. 
it is attached to the ribbon cable. So the thumbstick's uh, ribbon cable is attached to the main ribbon cable that connects the uh, buttons here, A and B, and the actual um, lighthouse sensors. So, oh my gosh, that was crazy. But now we got that disassembled and there's a small carbon film. Uh, buttons, dome, rubber dome things. And they should just go back on the buttons. So there's the uh, stock thumbstick. As you can see, it's all black. That's using plastic. And this, what we will be replacing, has metal. So that's it for this segment. And uh, let's cut to the soldering station. And I'm going to desolder it. Oh, what fun. OK, so basically now we're in the workbench. And I have these and these. So we're gonna replace it. So the tools we're gonna be using, or I'm gonna be using, is a solder sucker right here. This is just one that does the souk. And as you can see, it has a nice silicone tip. So I actually kind of spent too much on it. This is like $30. You do not need something this fancy. If I can find it, you can use something really cheap like this one. That does the same purpose, that does the plunger action. But I personally like this one because it, it it's metal, you know. And it does a better job, it has a better seal. So I'm not talking about solder sockers. And what I'm going to be using is just some basic lead solder. And obviously we will be using a nice soldering iron right here. This is, uh, trying not to burn shit. Uh, this is a Weller, and the tip I'm using is a WEP 70. So this is a 70 watt um, heater inside, and then the tip I'm using is just your standard sort of um, tip. And uh, yeah, some additional accessories that is not needed, but you know, you could use one of these um, brass wool pads. They help cleaning your tip like really well you get a nice clean tip and that's basically it okay so that's all the tools and equipment we need now let's get started desoldering nice so I'm looking from the top and um, you can usually find which one's good and which one's bad let me get a roofing nail <laughs> So these two, they look pretty good because you can see that they have a gap between the lead and the actual hole. This one's not good because you can see there's no gap. So all these three look okay, not perfect. But they look okay enough where you know, they can work. So in this clip, I'm actually checking if the leads are completely disconnected from the actual holes to pinpoint which one I need to redo. Uh, so what I'm actually doing is grabbing a pair of needle nose pliers and firmly grabbing them and then just kind of moving it forward and back just a little bit. Not too much, just enough to feel if it actually disconnected. Uh, sometimes you might um, kind of free up the solder joint if it's already properly uh, desoldered. Uh, some joints are not desoldered. So just like in the previous clip I showed you, you can look from the top and see if there's a gap. And if there isn't, and, uh, the, uh, and if the lead is not moving, then you just might need to redo that solder joint. So to redo the solder joint, I would recommend adding some, a little bit of solder and wait a couple of seconds longer, maybe even like 15 to 25 seconds. And uh, by doing this, you actually are making sure you're heating up the entire joint. And if you hit that solder socker, it should properly desolder. If not, then maybe mess with your solder sucker's uh, position or just wait a little bit longer and make sure that joint is completely heated up before you hit that solder sucker. I'm going to say YOLO and just pull it out. Ooh. Ow! <laughs> Alright, she came off. 
So we're gonna grab our new one, considering we just got our old one out, and our old one is no more. So toss that. We're gonna bring our nice shiny metal one too. Ooh, yeah. And we're just gonna line that up. So these three pins will line up with the three holes. It should be pretty simple to see. Yeah, like this is like one side, and it's the other side. So we're just gonna drop it in like so. So these soldering was the most hard part because you gotta make sure those joints are clean if the joint is not heated up enough and I recommend heating these joints up a lot because this is a very thick board and yes. But now it's it's in. So yeah, check that out. So yeah, now we're just gonna solder it up. So right here, as you can see, I am going to be re-soldering the new joystick in. So I'm actually going to add some solder to opposite leads of each end just to kind of hold it in place and it's easy to make small adjustments if the joystick is not sitting flush with the PCB. In my case it's sitting flush so I simply just start to re-solder all the other joints. And it's pretty simple, it's a lot easier than desoldering. All right, so we just finished soldering and it's time for reassembly. So it's just like disassembly, but in reverse. Uh, so in this quick clip right here, you see that I'm actually adding some dielectric grease to the joystick gimbal. This is just to kind of make it feel a little bit more bigger or just have a little bit more resistance. It's just a personal preference, but if you want to lubricate yours, I would recommend using some lithium grease to do so. One of the hardest parts of reassembling this was actually the large ribbon cable connecting the body to the main board. It was uh, really tricky, it took a long time to put it together, but I eventually got that cable snapped into, into place. So once that was all snapped in and I was able to put the board back, it allowed me to test the controller while it was still apart. To test the controller, I went into Steam VR and then controllers and then just test controller. And right there, I was able to see all the sensors and joystick and buttons too. And everything seemed to work just fine, so I just continued with the reassembly. And that's what I'm going to leave you guys at. So enjoy the rest of the video.
Greetings! It has been about two days after I have repaired this controller. So I repaired it on a Friday and now it's Monday. So I had all weekend to play with it and I have to say that it was a fantastic just uh, experience messing around with it. And the joystick actually feels a little better than the stock joystick. It feels a little bit more smooth. That could have been me just lubricating it. But I definitely do think that the metal gimbal is a great option, even though if it's not broken yet. I think it really does kind of give me a peace of mind that, yeah, it's not going to break and it has metal internals, so which is actually pretty nice. I'm not sure why Valve hasn't, maybe haven't actually added the metal joystick from the beginning, possibly due to part shortages, but that's that, and I have to say that it is just great. And the fact that makes it great is that we got this for 90 US dollars. So I spent around $70 or around, I'm going to round it up, say around $75 including tax and an additional $15 for the parts. So that's going to round us about $90. And it's a lot better than paying $140 for the what a single controller is worth. And uh, if you're looking to do this on a budget, I definitely should maybe look at this as an option. But this does require some technical know-how and some patience to reconnect those ribbon cables and do some desoldering. But if you do have the tools and if you're willing to take on a project like this, then I say go for it. It's a rewarding experience and you learn a lot from just tinkering with electronics and you get a working index controller. So that's going to be it for now. Um, if you liked my video so far, please drop a subscribe and like. I bet you haven't heard that before. Subscribe and like. So yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video.